Hello everyone, Megan Marie here, Senior Community Manager at Crystal Dynamics, and I'm super stoked to be back. Uh, we are here talking with Brian Horton about Rise of the Tomb Raider. Which Megan, is it's great to talk to you. Really exciting to finally get out and share about this game that you guys have been working so hard on. So thank you for joining me. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, so to start off, we're going to kick it over to the video that we played on the, or like the experience that we had on the Xbox the stage, avalanche. which was super exciting, the Avalanche video. Um, so this is the first time that we showed gameplay of Rise of the Tomb Raider, which was really exciting, and you were there on stage, so can you set up <laughs> what we're about to see? Yeah, so Lara and Jonah on, are on this, Lara's first great Tomb Raiding expedition, and she has this inkling that mm -hmm. a lost city is, is hidden up in the Siberian mountains, mm -hmm. and Jonah's seen enough to believe Lara, he's, he's a good friend, and they are at one of the most perilous parts of the mountain at the top of the mountain peak. All right, and things get intense. So we're going to cue to this. It's about a five-minute video you're going to see. This is what we showed. This was the first thing that we showed publicly of Rise. So let's kick it over to the video. Cool. be the kind of godforsaken place I do it. Storm's getting closer. We have a couple hours at most. Should be enough time. We're almost to the top. What do you think? We're close to something, Jonah. I can feel it. Just this last stretch to the top. All right. Let's see what's up there.
remember when it, when the, the lights were down and we had these cool little lights on our chest that were blinking different colors and different moments. It was a cool experience. What was it like on stage? It was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. I can imagine. Uh, I just not mess, don't mess up, don't mess up. Yeah. That's all. Well, you did an amazing job and the game looked great. And I know the team has been working so hard to get ready for this show. So it's wonderful to see it yeah, there. Yeah, a huge shout out to the dev team. They're yeah. they're the best in the industry and um, it's just an honor to be able to represent their hard work. Yeah, absolutely. So we had some questions. We gathered some questions from people on Twitter and Facebook and so on and we would love to run through some of those with you. Sure. So first, I actually think it would be great to give some uh, insight into just the narrative and the plot. You touched on it a little bit leading into the Avalanche demo, but you want to give a little bit more background story to where we start in Rise? Yeah, um, th this is Lara's first Tomb Raiding expedition, the first great Tomb Raiding expedition. I mm -hmm. mean, she she was uh, surviving Yamatai, and now she's proactively seeking out these lost cities mm -hmm. in the most remote and hostile places on Earth. And uh, the lost city of Yama, uh, the, lo the lost city of Katesh, is the her current obsession, and she has clues that have led her up to Siberia. And um, the the reason she's seeking this out is because there. She saw something on Yamatai that she couldn't explain, mm -hmm. and then this trail is leading to a similar kind of myth, and it, she believes if, if she finds it, she's going to be able to prove to the world that these things are real. And also prove to herself, right? Yeah. The fact that she did see that thing that she couldn't explain, that she needs that another shred of proof, another shred of proof. And it's not just about proof. I don't think she felt right going back home. I mean, she never quite fit when she returned. Mm -hmm. at, when she's out in the wilderness and surviving these situations, she feels more at home and more at peace in a strange way. Yeah. Um, she's she's realizing that this is her destiny to become the Tomb Raider. Fantastic. So this that actually leads perfectly into the next question, who was what, wh which was from Rayan on Twitter, and he asked, "How has Lara matured from the previous game?" And she definitely has. Oh, character growth is essential to uh, our vision for Tomb Raider. In the first game, Lara uh, had to really go from uh, a place of of inexperience to to survival, mm -hmm. and in this one, she's she's using those same skills, but much m more refined. She she understands that there are going to be people out there that might try to take her down, and she's going to learn some things. Like in gameplay terms, she has a bunch of new abilities. Her crafting has gotten much more rich. Mm -hmm. uh, she can she can now craft from multiple resources in the world, whether it be the deer that she finds. She can skin the hide. She can collect wood. Those create crafting rep recipes, which allows her to strengthen her her am her, her weapons, uh, and she can craft new ammunition like poison arrows to take out groups of groups of enemies. So not only is she changing as a character, but her her skill sets, her ability to front an assault, or in this case, it, to be more stealthy and to go. Uh, into the world unseen and take out these these threats is really developing in this game. Very cool. So we have a question from Richard on Facebook, and he's a longtime Tomb Raider fan looking for some big brain teasers in terms of puzzles, and he asks, so what does the Tomb Raiding business in Rise of the Tomb Raider look like? So how is that going to be different? How has that evolved? Well, we've... Uh, we wanted to keep a lot of the physics-based puzzles that we like from the last Tomb Raider, but we wanted them to be more epic. So the scale mm -hmm. of our tombs is much larger, and we've come up with a recipe or a formula called the nested puzzle. It's very similar yeah. to what classic Tomb Raider games are of multiple locations throughout an, a tomb that have something to solve, or in the simplest terms, key to puzzle. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't use keys, but we do have a big problem to solve, yep. and then these, the, the, the puzzles the, the will be broken down into multiple parts each blending from, you go from piece to piece with all of our three pillars, traversal, some combat, puzzle, and then we r wrap that up into a, uh, a, f a huge run out that, you know, the Lara has to, to, to survive to, get, to yep. get out of the tomb. So it's a, it's a much more robust expression of what we did in the last game, and I think Tomb Raider fans are gonna really appreciate the, um, the extra um, uh, epicness that we're bringing to yeah. tombs. Absolutely, and I think it's also worth mentioning the challenge tombs in there, right? I mean, those are the ones that I think are going to be, especially for nostalgic fans, the real, the real challenges, the one off the beaten path of it. Absolutely, and this is a great opportunity for me to shout out to uh, Idos Montreal, who's yeah. our partner in, in making this Tomb Raider single-player campaign. Yeah. It's a really big deal to have such talented people helping us make a lot of our challenge tombs, and yeah. their tombs are so cool. I just and very I difficult. <laughs> yeah, they're difficult, but that's what's great about yeah, them. That's why I we love. call them challenge tombs. Mm -hmm. And the stories they're telling in there, they're not just yes. puzzles. They really, each of them tell a story, and the rewards you get from those challenge tombs really help 
Laura progress as a character. Yeah, and what I love about them in particular is that you don't necessarily stumble upon them. You know, you have to be actively seeking some of yep. these ones. They're, they're hidden and tucked away, which makes you feel so accomplished when you find them, right? You feel like you're actually discovering a piece of history. Absolutely. Some of them have, like, a gear gate kind of quality, but some of them have guardians. Yes. And the guardians, the guardians are, are, cool. are extremely cool. And yes. the Siberian bear being one of the coolest. <laughs> I love the bear because it just reminds me of Tomb Raider 1. Absolutely. And how I w you'd enter that area and I'd just like immediately jump into the giant pool of water because I was so afraid of the bear. Yeah. And I'd just sit there. I mean, who, who <laughs> I, I remember vividly the encounter with the bear. Yes. It, it, it was, and, and predator animal, predator animals are a big part of the Tomb Raider franchise. Mm -hmm. So it's great to, to, to see for us that we've been able to, to add more into the mix for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, great. All right, so Ilian asks, Besi besides Siberia, is there a different place where the storyline unfolds? And mm. we just actually revealed this. Did we? Yeah. I can talk about it? You can talk about it. Why don't you break it then? You want me to break the news? You can. Okay. So we are going to Syria. Syria. Woohoo! So we've shown a couple of screenshots from awesome. Syria. And, and uh, we have the behind closed doors demo yep. here at E3. Yes. And you see on Lara's little GPS that she's in Syria. And why is she there? She's finding the first pieces of the breadcrumbs, right? This is the first, you know, breadcrumb that will lead her ultimately to Siberia. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go into a lot more detail than that. There's so much I could talk about in yeah. this. But it, what's great about this location is it, it's, it really gives us a different flavor, a di different mm -hmm. visual palette. And we really made sure that this space f <laughs> fulfilled that fantasy fulfillment of finding and going through a tomb. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things particularly uh, in this tomb, and we've shown a bit of this, we have a couple screenshots of it, but there's traps, traps. in the tombs, which is something that's so, again, nostalgic and nostalgic, iconic. Nostalgic, absolutely. And we, there's a screenshot out of there of the yeah. spike trap. Yeah, she's ducking. I, I wanted that to go on. I said, I got it. we got to put a, tra yeah, a trap screenshot out. The, the trap screenshot and the swimming segment in the trailer. Yes. And it's just like, those are the two things we need to button up together. Yeah, let's and, start and checking the, the classic <laughs> things off the list. Swimming. Bear, trap, uh, swimming. swimming. We'll get more in there. Yeah. Big tombs. All right. All right. So Little Bird Croft, Lara Brian, asks, uh, will there be a much stronger focus on general exploration in this game than the previous installment? And similarly, someone else asks if um, Reyes asks, will the GPS cache relic treasure hunting system uh, return in Rise of the Tomb Raider? I really love this in Tomb Raider. So some cool news is our exploration spaces, we've called them hubs in the past, but these are these large open areas that the player can choose to explore around. Some of them are three times larger than what we had on the last Tomb Raider game. And not, not only are they bigger, but there's more things to do. Absolutely. There's challenges, there's collectibles. I talked about there's, there's 16 unique collectibles in the world and things you can hunt or collect. So if you want to, to gather these resources, you can craft new things. It's abs absolutely a fun thing to do. And the other thing we've introduced is allies throughout the world. We're not mm -hmm. going into details about yeah. the allies, but they can give you um, challenge missions and you can go on these missions and you get rewards from them. And finally, I mean, we're, we're beating a dead horse on this one, but tombs. Yes. Is, all of our challenge tombs come from these exploration spaces. And one of the things in particular I liked about the hubs and the exploration, and we talked a bit about this on the forums previously, is that it's not just tombs with puzzles. There are sometimes you just stumble into a cave, and yeah. there was an animal den, and maybe there was something interesting in there, or crypts. And they're not these huge spaces that have puzzles dedicated to them, but they're these but other they're ancient spaces that you feel, like, yeah, like you feel like you've discovered something. You can enter a path and just you have no idea where it leads, yeah. and that's so cool. And there's an other archaeological things, which I don't think we're talking about right now, but we are putting more archaeology into the, the art of being a Tomb Raider. So yes. um, th the, the appreciation of ancient relics, like I think there was a question on, on geo, uh, the, the, the um, GPS. We're, th th we're more focused on the relic, yep. you know, the relics. That's a big part of the, of the loop. But there are a ton of other collectibles besides Great. GPS. That's what I like to hear as someone who has to 100%. Yeah. Me too. All right. Uh, Brian on Twitter, Creekmore Brian asks, will they emphasize more of a stealth system and talent tree for stealth killing enemies? So you want to touch on our flavor of stealth? Yes. It's we're, we are enriching the, uh, the idea of combat by, for, by being controlled by player choice. Mm -hmm. So we've introduced new traversal mechanics. So Lara can now climb trees. Yeah. She can swim underwater. Yes. And both of those things have not only just fun to do in traversal, but they give the player an opportunity to um, to go unseen over top of enemies by going from branch to branch, or if you want to, take them down from the, from the tree branch. Same thing for underwater. You can go underwater and you can swim past them and not be seen, or you can do a special kill from underwater. So these ingredients have, have introduced a whole new level of stealth. On top of that, 
we have so many more things to craft in the world. Distractions, for instance, if you have a radio from the Trinity officers, you can throw a radio out there. It will draw three Trinity or wh how many ever Trinity soldiers are in the area to one location. You can craft a portable explosive with a gas can and you can blow them up at one time. Yeah. These are all choices for the player. We don't ask them. They don't have to do them, but we let them know that these are available and it really makes the combat that, that much more compelling. And there's pros and cons to each different method, correct? So if you go in guns blazing and you decide to be more proactive in battle, then you're going to run out of resources yeah. quicker versus... Uh, you know, it's just it, there's pros but and cons. It, it, it comes down to player choice yes. and player preference. So if you're an action player and you loved in Tomb Raider the bombastic, yeah. fast-paced action, you can go that way. You can go that way, and we're not going to make that, you know, an impossible route. But if you if you found the combat was a little tough for you, or you would prefer not to to, to engage as much, we are giving that that type of player a lot more, many more opportunities to to be able to use stealth as a means to reduce the kill counts. Fantastic. Uh, Philip17 on Twitter asks, how are you balancing the difficulty levels of the game? That's a good question. Uh, generally, difficulty on the last game was, was about um, difficulties of the, of the enemy AI and mm -hmm. how much hit points they can take and how much damage Lara could take. Um, when it comes to puzzles, it's very difficult yeah. to manage puzzle difficulty. So I think the difficulty around there is whether or not you finish all the challenge tombs, and that's yeah. sort of how we scale it, because they're not on primary path. Um, but yeah, I, I think... We, 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 we try to invest mostly in, in Lara's um, abilities through combat through that uh, difficulty curve. So if, if you're not very good at combat or you don't like to do it, you can, you can ramp that down and, and have an easier time at, and But it. then still enjoy the same... Absolutely. The same quality and, and level of puzzle. Yeah, you go challenge. through the same story. It's just we, we, we make it a little easier for those that don't like... Great. Or don't feel as competent with the, the combat. All right, Andrea... Okay, asks, is there going to be swimming? The trailer made it look like there was swimming. I know, I just want to, I just want to like touch on this again. Yes, we have swimming, swimming. In, in Tomb Raider. There is swimming. How um, exciting is that? And, and um, just to set expectations, you know, um, we were not a free swimming game where we're going to have huge, mm -hmm. vast ocean sized things to swim through, but we are introducing into tombs, either getting into them or through them, um, sw swimming components, and, and they, they feature heavily throughout the game. Yep, great. Uh, Greg Davies asks, how is the relationship between Lara and Jonah developed since the last game and the novel The Ten Thousand Immortals? They are beyond friends. At well, let me put let me, that's <laughs> a dangerous way to say it. They they are, Jonah has Lara's back 100%, yep. and, and Lara feels the same way. They, they um, He shares her vision for the, wor for the world, and, and, and she, he supports her for what she wants to do. But ultimately, Lara is has the singular ability to be the Tomb Raider. Yeah. So as, as far as Jonah would like to go, he can't go where Lara can go. Yeah. And, um, uh, but yes, their, their relationship is deep to the point where uh, he might sometimes throw caution at her and say, hey, are, we, are you sure we want to do this? But ultimately, he's always going to support yeah, her. Yeah, he's always going to be, be having her back. That's and so right. On, which is great. All right. Uh, similarly, Laura Ashley was asking if any other characters will make an appearance. She says, I haven't had a chance to read the Dark Horse comics, and they pick up right after what happened on Yamatai. Am I missing out on any potential story if I haven't read them? If you haven't read them, it's, it's additional uh, media. You don't need it to understand the story for Rise of the Tomb Raider. And you, don't, you wouldn't have had to play the original uh, Tomb Raider 2013 either. Mm -hmm. But if you have read those companion things, it does enrich yep. the story that, that Laura is going on. Great. And a couple more. Henrik asks, will we find out more about Lara's family in the past uh, and past in the Rise of Tomb Raider? And if so, how? Diaries, flashbacks, and so on. It is something that I can say we are look I, I don't know if I can talk about that one. So I will say. <laughs> err on the side of I'm caution. I'm going to err on the side of caution on that one. Um, just, just know that we are very much interested in Lara's journey. This is a story about her. Yes. We're making her the most believable and human character in video games. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is understand where she came from. So that's about all I can say at this point. All right. And as a final question, one that I hear all the time, is what nostalgic elements do you personally feel are more explored in Rise of the Tomb Raider, the ones that we're really pushing that are going to amp up that nostalgia factor? I think we went over a couple of them. But let's we just did. start. We let's just run it down. So obviously, if you're a, a Tomb Raider fan, you love tombs, we are bring, making having more tombs, more challenge tombs. And the the tomb the primary tombs are bigger and more complex and yes. can be a lot of fun. If um, you wanted swimming in Tomb Raider, that, we have swimming in there. So check um, predator animals like the bear. Mm -hmm. Check um, those things. I, I believe are, are from from what my memories of Tomb Raider. You know those are the things that stick out. Um, but yeah, th th we've those are, those are my top lines. We've also confirmed multiple outfits, which is cool. Multiple outfits at and any that's time. That's a pretty cool thing. For I Tomb had, we had fans. one person say. 
I, I felt so cold that I always had her in the snow outfit. Yes. And I love that. Yes. It's a good little quote. <laughs> That's great. All right, so we are actually going to give you guys, if you have not had a chance to see this yet, we're going to go out on our new trailer, which shows the swimming and shows a couple of the different locations and, and the action and so on in Rise of the Tomb Raider. So we are going to say goodbye and sign off and leave you with that trailer. So thank you so much for joining us, Brian. It's great to talk to you again, Megan. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Something else dwells in the darkness of this place, but I've got to continue. I finally feel a sense of purpose again. Like I'm doing what I was meant to do. Some kind of marker. The journey will be perilous, but I must find a way. Thank you.